Well, church, today we celebrate Good Friday, a day which commemorates the day in which Jesus was crucified on the cross, a day where the entire landscape of Christianity changed, a day which resembles mourning, grieving, confusion, times where where it seems that the outlook and the hope for the future may seem bleak, uh, a time uh, of despair. And I think for us as Christians, right, as we uh, know the end of the story, we know what happens in three days when we get to celebrate Easter. It's so easy for us sometimes uh, to just skip the two days in between uh, Good Friday and Easter where we can really um, you know, bypass a lot of the more difficult emotions that uh, we are called to wrestle through. And uh, instead of doing that, instead of uh, jumping straight to Easter, we do want to take this time, this moment uh, to pause, this moment to assess everything that Jesus's crucifixion on the cross meant for us. Um, It could be uh, difficult sometimes uh, as we are called to, to process through our our feelings of grief. Uh, It could be difficult to process through uh, maybe the emotions that may rise up when we realize uh, the pain and the very real suffering that Jesus went through uh, for us. The example of of what it means to to break your own body for the sake of someone else in the name of love. Uh, That could be hard to wrestle with. Uh, But today, uh, we do find it important to do so. Uh, So during this time, during this uh, Good Friday devotional, uh, the theme or uh, the the virtue that we want to center upon, the positive virtue, is that of of despair and grief. Uh, And I know that those are oftentimes conflicting values, right? That that grief usually isn't seen as good. But for in our case, uh, it can be seen as a way uh, in which we could move towards uh, maybe the importance of, of this day, of commemorating this day. Uh, And we first want to do so by rereading the passage in Scripture where we can uh, really remember uh, the price that Jesus paid in the name of love. Um, So I'm going to go ahead and read from our Scriptures, the chapter uh, 23 of the book of Luke, where it reads of the death of Jesus. In verse 44, it says these words. It was now about noon. And darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. For the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the woman who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. You know, church, as I read those words and as I just recount in my own mind's eye what it must have been like uh, to be there, to witness Jesus. And, uh, I know that there are so many disciples that you know, couldn't be there because of fear, uh, because of their own persecution. But it does say that there are a few who were there to witness uh, the people who, who beat their breasts and cried out and, and went away in grief. It's so hard sometimes uh, to feel that emotion and to to stay in that place uh, without jumping to the hope that's found in the future, without just wanting to skip to the end and, you know, just be better, just feel better. But I pray that during this moment in time that we could uh, really soak in the emotions of grief to really feel the hate, the heaviness and the weight um, so that it would mean something, that that sacrifice of love that Jesus uh, 
his act of love, what it meant that we'd be able to fully feel the weight of that. And that would be, um, you know, the motivation for us to do that to, to other people around us. So as we always do, why don't we just go ahead and just take a quick moment just to breathe deeply from uh, that, the richness that we found in that text, but also to take that quick moment to process you know, what it is that we're feeling to come uh, to grips with the emotion swelling up inside of us. And in a few moments, I'll go ahead and I'll call us uh, to sing just one song to help center and focus uh, these emotions that we may be feeling. If you know uh, the words, you can feel free to go ahead and sing along with me as this becomes our own prayer of praise to the Lord. Let's go ahead and give the Lord this time. Above all powers, above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom, all the ways of man. You were here. Before the world began, above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth. to measure what your word crucified made behind the soul live to die rejected and below like a rose trampled on the ground you took Sing above all powers, above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wealth and all the ways of man. You were here before. Above all wealth and 
hidden treasures of the earth. There's no way to measure what you're worth. Crucified, laid behind the soul, you live to die, rejected and on the ground you took the fall and thought of me on the ground you took the fall and thought of me above all and like a rose trampled on the ground you took the fall thought of me above all. <laughs> you know, this song in particular that we just sang, um, it really does, uh, in my mind, speak to the message of Good Friday, not just because, um, you know, we can sing about Jesus, right, our Savior, our Christ, uh, the one whose body was broken for us. Um, but it also doesn't really just yet jump to the hope of the resurrection. Um, and I think that, you know, especially this past year, there's been so much for us uh, to process in terms of grief, in terms of despair. Um, even today, right, I'm sitting here in, in this empty chapel, right, uh, a blatant reminder for me every time I come in here that there is something that, um, that we can grieve this past year, uh, the missing of our, our church family, the missing of, of being in this place, being able to worship together. Uh, that is absolutely something um, that we grieve. And right now, um, just as uh, this is on the forefront of my mind, um, I'm actually going to pass it off to, to Pastor Lauren, uh, who's going to lead us through uh, the second part of this uh, Good Friday devotional, a time where we can also process uh, through some of this grief, right? Just like we see in scriptures, as the women at the tomb, as uh, later on different characters grieve, um, this is also a season in which we can uh, come to grips with some of the things that are stirring up inside of us. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Pastor Lauren for the rest of this time. Thank you, Pastor Matt, for that centering time of worship and explanation of what happened at the grave of Jesus Christ. And as we continue the commemoration of Good Friday, we think about what that truly means to remember Jesus, to remember what he did on the cross for us. And although this holiday is called Good Friday, we think about how difficult it was for those around Jesus and for Jesus himself, that this is one of the most monumental, revolutionary, radical, phenomenal weekends of the history of the world and it's because of Jesus's death that we are able to have life that Jesus with his death on the cross that we were able to have victory over death and in that uh, we just want to say thank you Jesus and we want to continue to center our hearts in this place of mourning 
And so as we reflect on the past year, I know a lot of us have lost loved ones in the pandemic. And some of you may have lost loved ones because of COVID-19. And in this, I know that there is just such a different way of having to mourn. And I know some of you early in the pandemic weren't able to uh, bury your parents or you weren't able to, you know, go to the funeral of a loved one. And some of you weren't even able to go to the hospital of those that were sick. And, you know, I really want to invite Jesus into that pain and into that suffering as Jesus invited God into his suffering. And, you know, through this, um, my heart has really just been heavy for our congregation and for our world. And through that, um, I've kept a little post-it note um, right at my desk um, in my at-home office right here. And I've just been praying for all of you who have lost loved ones um, almost daily, um, just because it looks so different from mourning or grieving in the past. And as we go into this time of reflection, it's going to come in two parts. And the first part, I wanted to go over just several ways that we can mourn in a healthy way. And the second part is going to be a reflection in how we can reflect on certain Bible verses of Jesus's last sayings and just combine these things in commemorating what Jesus did on the cross. And so we are going to take our own mourning and our own grief that we've experienced in our lives, whether it's through someone we've lost or, um, you know, things that we've lost. And we're going to sort of put ourselves in that position of thinking about what that must have felt like for Jesus's sphere of influence to feel that same kind of loss with Jesus. And I think every single year we need to feel the weight of what this is like because in that death of Jesus, there was such victory and such hope and such life that came a few days later on Easter that we get to celebrate. But we don't get that celebration unless we recognize the loss. And so through some research, um, here's a few ways that we can grieve in a healthy way. So one, um, we can make a in-home memorial to the people that we've lost, whether this is pictures or, you know, in our, some of our cultures, um, we put lays uh, in commemoration of the person's life. Another healthy way to grieve is don't feel pressured to purge the closet and don't feel that guilt or shame that you have to just do it immediately. Um, that out of sight, out of mind thing. Um, take your time and allow your body to rest. Allow your body to grieve. Allow your body to mourn. And another healthy way to grieve is don't put a time limit to your pain. God's timing is never too early and never too late. And God's timing um, transcends anything that we could ever think of. And actually God transcends time. And so we want to welcome him into our concept of time and our concept of grief. And another way to grieve in a healthy way is to simply reach out to get support, to know that it's okay to receive in this time. And kind of like what's done at a funeral or a burial service, um, there is memory shared about one's life and there's historical things that you look back on to celebrate 
what this person did when they're on this earth and what this person has left in their legacy uh, moving forward. And this is a healthy way to grieve too, to not just do this at a time of a funeral, but to work this in in your everyday lives as you are uh, remembering this person or talking about this person um, to others. For myself personally, I remember my first two deaths that I had to um, deal with and process and reflect on in life was the death of my grandpa and the death of my auntie Gail. And I remember being a very new Christian at that time. And I was so much in my own grief. I didn't quite know how to process. And it was a beautiful thing in that the Lord um, really showed me how to process and how to talk to him uh, when I dared to invite him into that process, even though I didn't know what that would look like. And I actually found um, this journal and it's my very, very, very first journal that I ever wrote in, and it was from 2007. And even my first entry um, was June 8th, 2007, and it was the day after my Auntie Gail passed. And, you know, I dug this up out of the garage, and I haven't read it since then, but... I just reflected on how I felt. I reflected on what happened. And even in my brokenness, I was able to allow God to come into that place. And I truly felt that his heart comforted me in just the act of talking with him. And I actually think that, you know, Jesus did this while he was on the cross. Um, as he was about to get crucified, he was in conversation with the Father in his grief, in his mourning. And that's what he calls us to do too in our grief and in our mourning. And inviting God into this process of conversing with him in whatever I was feeling, it showed me what it looks like to have an open conversation with him. And this has launched me into a place actually of archiving all that God has done. Um, this journal uh, was actually given to me by my Auntie Gail and I actually didn't start writing in it until she passed away. But it has launched me into this place of feeling so connected with God when I tell him my thoughts that now, um, you know, every year of my life since 2007, I probably fill up a good um, three, four, five journals a year. And um, the neat thing is, you know, this journal, um, it's an archive of my first interactions with God. It's, um, it captured my first missions trip with God. It captured my first inklings of thinking, God, are you calling me into ministry? Um, I have a, you know, church program from, you know, the year of 2007, and it's actually saying a journey through Lent. And to see, um, you know, how far I've come, how far our church has come, it's just really encouraging to see who God is um, through reading the word, through services, through writing about who he is. And with this, I think when we combine our thoughts and our heart and our mind with God, even if it's in the tough subject of grieving and mourning, um, he brings his comfort. And it says in the Beatitudes, blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. And I truly felt comforted in those times of mourning, in those times of grief. Um, right now, I'm going to just read a few statements of Jesus's last words, and I want us to just process them. And I want us to be um, within this Lenten journey, um, just seeking what that looks like in our hearts, in our lives of what Jesus did on the cross for us. And all of these things are very revealing 
to the extent of our flesh and our human nature. And so um, let's just pray to embrace those things right now. Luke 23, 34, it says, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Luke 23, 43 says, Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. John 19, 26, 27 says, Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. Matthew 27, 46 says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? John 19, 28 says, I thirst. John 19, 29 through 30 says, it is finished. And lastly, in Luke 23, 46, it says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. So since this is a video, I encourage you to pause and reflect and actually go back to these verses and just reflect on what these phrases of Jesus's last statements really encompass. And here we see different themes of forgiveness, themes of a heart of a mother, being forsaken, being thirsty, giving up of one's spirit, and just committing their lives to God. But the most important question that I want us to think about on this day of Good Friday is why did Jesus do this for us? Why did this unfathomable act occur? And as we think about and reflect on and grieve and mourn why Jesus did this on the cross for us, I want us to think about that immense love and sacrifice that that took. And so in knowing that, uh, why don't we go to the Lord in prayer and we just want to um, submit our lives to him and knowing all that our father and all that Jesus Christ did for us. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your presence God, we thank you for the crazy story that you sent your one and only son to die for us. And we thank you for how in our grieving, in our mourning, we can realize your heart, your presence is with us. So God, may we just think about that question of why Jesus, you died on the cross for us. And if we take anything from this, may we just know that it's your unconditional love for us. Your unconditional love that conquered the grave. And may we find rest and peace in that as we prepare our hearts to celebrate all that is yet to come in a few days on Easter. So thank you, Jesus, for the hope that is found in you. And we pray that over our congregation right now in Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you so much for joining us um, virtually for our Good Friday devotional. And we pray that you can join us either virtually or in person in our parking lot on Easter. And so we will be live streaming our Easter service at 10 a.m. And we will also be having a joyous service in the parking lot at 10 a.m. And so you could sign up on our website and you can find the link to the live stream on our website. And again, that's anaheimfmc.org. So blessings to you. Uh, may you feel the Lord's peace. May you feel the Lord's comfort. May you feel the Lord's joy. And may you feel the Lord's future hope for you through the victory over death on the cross. God bless you, church family.